Welcome back Mercer University and the Bibb County Courthouse staff working on a historical project designed to provide information on a subject many would prefer not to talk about. As Suzanne Lawler shows you, it's a process that once complete will help shed light on a dim time in local history. What I was not prepared for, the kind of psychological and spiritual effect that it has on me. I grew up here in Macon and I had no idea that these records existed here in Bibb County. Chester Fontenot is an African Studies professor at Mercer. His friend, Erica Woodford, is Bibb County's clerk of Superior Court. I would come up here and just sort of look and see what type of records we have, and I started pulling these books. What was in those books, nestled in what's called the vault of the courthouse, was startling. And I noticed actual slave transactions, and so it gave me chills. John Chapman for consideration of $1,240.08. Woodford joined Fontenot. Together, the county and Mercer University are working to digitize all the records. Mercer students have spent countless hours documenting page by page what this cursive script reveals. Found a record um, from Gerald Plantation where some one of the owners of Gerald Plantation uh, is selling a slave to a person named Nathan Rogers. The project began five years ago, and Fontenot believes it will take another three before the public can access all of this online. These documents are, are so significant and so important. Uh, first, to understand what really happened in Bibb County. Uh, Bibb County was uh, uh, incorporated in 1823, so the documents start then in 1823. And then, of course, the freedom of people of African descent in 1865. Let's see, what are we selling here? The following Negroes. A Negro named Anthony, a Negro woman named Winnie, and her female child named Beck. It's a little bit unusual to have this many records at the Bibb County Courthouse because if you think about it, over the last century or so, many of these types of records have been destroyed in one way or another. Hancock County, just recently, their courthouse burned down. And others have had significant water damage. What's undeniable is the damage done from a mental and physical standpoint of people bought and sold. And those scars reach through the decades to the folks bringing those memories back to life. It brings the people to life. Uh, we, we, when we, when we uh, just lump everybody into, and say, in, into a category and say, well, there were slaves here, uh, that denies people their individuality. It denies people their substance, their humanity. These people had names, they had families, they had desires, they had wants, they had needs, uh, and should have had rights. There's raw emotion, but Fontenot says the project has also shed some light. It makes me very, it makes me sad, it makes me angry, um, but it also um, lets me know that we've come a long way as a society. And there's also a promise to bring all of the stories into the open, a collaborative effort to preserve pieces of Central Georgia history. Suzanne Lawler, 13 WMAZ News. Now when the project is finished, you'll be able to access the records through the Bibb County Courthouse site online. Chester Fontenot says down the road, they'll also search for these types of records in the Jones, Twiggs, and Monroe County Courthouses. 